Welcome to the lunchtime festivities. If you weren't at the opening ceremony this morning, I'm Elliot Nyblack, educator, peer mentor, founder of Reality by Design Consulting and Chief Education and Equity Officer at the D. Wood Foundation. Hello, Elliot. And I am Kimberly Holiday, motivational speaker, mental health advocate, youth peer support specialist, and the first elected black woman to the Pflugerville City Council, known to most of you as Lady Joy. Elliot and I are your MCs for this conference. I'm so glad you're here joining us this hour for Austin's favorite Blues Funk Brothers, awards for individuals who are making a difference in our community, as well as some fun with DJ Heliella. First, we'd like to give a shout out to the Wood Group for being one of our sponsors. Well, let's get to it. The two young men you are about to see learn to play music listening to the Isley Brothers, Earth, Wind and & Fire, and B.B. King. They've built a fan base across the United States. They are the Peterson Brothers. I'm Alex, I'm Glenn, and we're the Peterson Brothers. We're happy to be a part of the Central Texas African American Family Support Conference. We hope you all enjoy and please share the resources and information from the conference with all of your friends. I absolutely love the Peterson Brothers, um, Elliot. Um, mm -hmm. When I do my radio show, my gospel show with KZI, I loved using their song Amazing Grace as my music bed for my prayers and my scriptures. So again, thank you to the Petersons brothers. And I remind you that music is medicine. And one of the things I am infinitely thankful for is that all of the music I hear here gets stuck in here. <laughs> Wonderful way to keep my day going. And so before we head into the awards, we have a special message from a woman who has dedicated her career to ensuring the most fragile members of our community have fair access to justice. She is attorney Pam Davis. Hello, Central Texas African American Health. I am so happy to be here with you all today. My name is Pam Davis and I'm an attorney here in the Travis County area. I've practiced law for more than 23 years and I have had the privilege and the honor of helping people during some of their most vulnerable moments. My practice has consisted of representing people in family law. So I've dealt with clients when they are going through divorces. Um, some people have been married for more than 20 years and now they're trying to figure out where do I go from here? I've represented clients who are um, dealing with custody matters and now they're trying to figure out where are our children going to live? What parent will they live with? I've dealt with clients when their parent has become ill and now they are becoming the caretakers and they are trying to figure out what type of care do I need to get my parents? What's, is there a power of attorney needed? Do I need to draft, does my parents need to draft a will? What do we do? Do we need to have a guardianship for our parent? I've helped grandparents try to get visitation of grandchildren. I've helped people who were, who've been injured um, in serious uh, car collisions and 18 wheeler collisions. Um, you name it, I've helped people with uh, losing their jobs and they're trying to appeal because you, as you all know, we all need to work in order to survive. And so in dealing with my clients and uh, I've dealt with my clients who are facing jail time, facing prison, and their life and their family's life is now, you know, just turned upside down. I've dealt with numerous clients who've had mental Ill illnesses, and a lot of times I see in some of my juvenile cases that a lot of what occurs happens because of a lot of past trauma that has been unresolved, and this trauma um, sometimes leads to addictions and um, uh, poor choices. So I'm so glad to know you all are having this uh, discussion today because mental health is real. 2020, 2021 have been some of the most difficult recent years that we have had. And a lot of people are not okay. We're walking around, we look okay, we look good on the outside, we're dressed head to toe, but we're not okay. And so I'm, I'm thankful to know that you are having this discussion. I've dealt with family, uh, like I said, many families and even my own family. 
uh, members who, who've dealt with addictions. And so one of the things I've learned is that we can love someone, we can work with someone, but in the end, every individual has to make their own decision on how they want to live their life. But please stay in the fight with those who are struggling because we struggle. Yet there is hope. There is always hope when we as a community, when we as a people stand together and stay together and help our loved ones, there is nothing we can't do. So again, I'm Pam Davis. I thank you so much for this opportunity to be here today. And now we welcome a man who has dedicated his life to public service. As former president of the NAACP, he stood up for civil rights. Wherever he goes, it is his mission to make sure everyone's voice is heard. Now coming to the Central Texas African American Family Support Conference stage, we welcome Commissioner Jeff Trevelyan from the Travis County Commissioner's Court. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Trevelyan, and I'm here today uh, to support uh, the Central Texas African American Family Support Conference. You know, this has been a difficult couple of years. You, we've been working as a community to make sure that we are reaching out to our neighbors through trusted family members, through trusted community institutions. And we've learned that there are a lot of issues that we have to work through. We've learned that a lot of people are hurting, they're in pain, and that we can only work together as a community to address the type of needs they have. Uh, this has been something that has been done time and time again in this conference. Uh, we need to continue to build upon the opportunities uh, that you've created. We need to work together as a community. We need to wrap our arms around each other as a family. Uh, now is a very important time as we look at COVID and how it has ravaged our community. Um, many of us have lost close family members, have lost close, close friends, uh, have lost people that we rely on. Uh, it's important for us to be a strong community and to be a resilient community and to do all of those things to build community that have been done for us. Uh, certainly, uh, this is a challenging time but it does create many opportunities as well. Uh, you will see Travis County uh, reaching out uh, to our church community, reaching out to our Divine Nine community, reaching out to organizations that have historically uh, worked together and centered us as a community. We take that work very seriously. We're trying to build systems. We, we, we don't just want transactions. We want things that community can rely on. Uh, we know that for many years, as it relates to government services, uh, we often have not been welcomed. Uh, sometimes have been made to feel ashamed about uh, needing access to resources. Well, I'm here today to say uh, the approach that we're taking now is uh, we need to know what the issues are. We need to know what the needs are. We need to make sure that we build together as community members. So we take this type of work very seriously and we look forward to working with uh, not only the conference, but with the community that this conference supports. Uh, so thank you for all of the work that you've done. Uh, you've done, we look forward to continuing that work and healing and building together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Trevelyan. It's time to honor a few individuals here in Central Texas for their exemplary work improving the lives of people impacted by mental illness and other health related issues. We're talking about people who lift up this community each and every day. You're going to recognize some of their faces. Don't forget to put your comments and your kudos out there in the chat. Here are the awardees of the Richard E. Hopkins Torch Awards. First, we have James Ockelberry, Community Impact, 
minister at Corinth Baptist Church, and a staunch mental health advocate and substance abuse awareness advocate. First of all, I'd like to thank God for the energy and effort that he has given me to uh, provide ministry for those that are in need. I'd like to thank the awards ceremony for recognizing me for my efforts uh, with this. I couldn't have done it without God and my family. Uh, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Thanks. Sandra Smith, professional and individual with lived experience. Best known for her work on reentry peer support specialist certification training here in Texas. Hello. The nomination and selection for the Richard E. Hopkins Torch Award is one of the most humbling events of my entire life. An award for the impact of my work, specifically in my community, the African American community, has exceeded all expectations. Thank you to those that have supported my work, and thank you to the committee chairs for selecting me to receive this honor. The Kearney family for their love of community and being brave to share their lived experience with a tragedy. Hello, my name is Ambrose Kearney. And right now I'm very excited as well as humble to find out that I am the, a recipient of the Richard E. Hopkins Torch Award. I had no idea that my everyday work would one day be recognized for this. I am truly humble to accept this award. Thank you very much, God bless. For a complete biography, go to the attendee list to read all about them. And what an incredibly deserving group of people. Thank you all for the service, strength, healing, and just being the people you are that you present to the community. Another individual tireless in his service to the people of Texas is Representative Garnett Coleman, who has for the last 29 years served Houston's District 147 in the Texas House of Representatives. He is a leader in the area of healthcare, and he's been a supporter of this conference since the beginning. It is now our pleasure to present the Garnet F. Coleman Eternal Flame Award, given to a public official for their commendable efforts in support of health and well being of everyone. The 2022 Eternal Flame Award recipient is Joyce James. Ms. James's work has taken her from CPS caseworker to assistant commissioner of Texas CPS to deputy commissioner of Department of Family and Protective Services to associate deputy executive commissioner of the Center for Elimination of Disproportionality and Disparities and the Texas Office of Minority Health. She's been fighting fierce, fearlessly to improve child welfare, including the enforcement of child abuse and neglect laws, providing services to children, youth, and families, and creating models of practice to address racial inequalities. Miss Joyce James. Hello. I am honored by your recognition of my work and the benefit to our African American families and communities. I am profoundly grateful that you see my work as being worthy of the Garnet Coleman Eternal Flame Award. My commitment to you is that I will continue the journey in the fight against institutional and structural racism for the health, safety, and well being of our families and our communities. Thank you. What a beautiful group of awardees. We're so lucky to have each of them facilitating healing and recovery every day in our community. If you'd like to learn more about the award winners, visit their profiles in the attendees tab on the main menu. If any of you missed this morning's opening ceremony, just a quick reminder of all the conference opportunities. We want to start by saying that we are here to help you with any issues, big or small. This technology may be new to many of us. So for help navigating Whova, go to the main navigation menu. Under resources, you will see an FAQ as well as Whova guides. Scrolling through both of those will likely answer your question. If you need more help or technical support, go to the conference website, ctaafsc.com, and click on the chat box. A staff member is ready and waiting to help. Hmm. 
Beyond the fabulous workshop sessions and keynote speakers, we are here to connect. It's like a family reunion, Elliot. Mm -hmm. We hope you'll get snapping and join the photo contest. Make sure you catch your best side and the light. The most liked photo wins a prize. The contest is available for everyone on the mobile app and on the web app. You'll see photos under additional resources. You can also earn points and be entered to win a prize by taking surveys, polls, and giving session feedback. Click on the leaderboard to track how many points you've got. And you can be entered into a gift card raffle by entering the passport contest. You can enter the passport contest when you visit our exhibitors. At each exhibitor, to be very clear, there are three things you must do. Number one, be sure to claim any deals and offerings. Number two, you also need to like the booth. And number three, you just need to post a comment or a chat to collect the stamp. Yep, it's that simple. The people with the most stamps at the end of the conference will be entered into the raffle to win a gift card. To fully enjoy this contest, download the Whova app on your phone or a tablet and click on the passport to keep track of how many stamps you have. First, the way you pronounce Whova, I get jealous every single time. You should be a spokesperson. And all that, how about a music break? You know I am always ready for some music. Mm -hmm. Actually, any kind of music. We are excited that we'll get to see you later this afternoon for our keynote speaker, Ms. Regina Louise. Ms. Louise knows firsthand the extreme difficulties a foster child faces. Her memoir, Somebody's Someone, is the subject of an Emmy-nominated PBS documentary. Ms. Louise is a child welfare executive coach, as well as a trainer of cultural humility and trauma-informed care practices. Please get set for her powerful messages in just a few moments. I'm definitely looking forward to our keynote. Feel free to hang out here until 1240. DJ Helly Yella is spinning our tunes on the ones and twos, including your request. Don't forget to type those requests in the chat and let's get dancing. Mm -hmm. You're muted. <laughs> 